Attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ Back to Basics Introduction to Navigation Tools in AutoCAD 2016. I'll be one of your presenters today. My name is Scott Green. I've been doing these webinars last couple months here, and with me today is Zach Travis, is my co-presenter. Also, we have Bryce Talen aboard as a moderator today. And uh, so today we're going to be covering some uh, navigation tools, so steering wheel, views, um, nav bar. Uh, but first, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a refresher. If, um, if this is the first time joining us today, we'll just talk about ourselves a little bit here. So again, my name is Scott Green. I'm here at uh, the Lake Oswego office in Oregon. I am a uh, technical support specialist um, I was on the AutoCAD team. I just did a transition over to uh, the BIM team. Um, I had previously supported Reddit, so it's uh, nice to be going back over there. And then we have Zach Travis. Uh, he also works with me here at the Lake Oswego, Oregon office, and he is also a technical support specialist currently on the AutoCAD team. And Bryce as well, Bryce Talen uh, here at Lake Oswego. And uh, he's also a AutoCAD support specialist. So again, welcome to the Autodesk Help Webinar Series. Uh, we have a couple of upcoming upcoming topics. So coming up on the 10th of this month, we will have uh, the third dimension, solid editing tips and tricks in AutoCAD 2016, followed on the 17th with uh, Beyond the Basics, customizing the user interface in AutoCAD uh, 2016. Uh, on the 24th, we'll have tips and tricks, new features in AutoCAD 2017. And then coming back on March 31st uh, with Zach, it's going to be uh, introduction to layer management in AutoCAD 2016. And before we get started, feel free to leave questions in the question chat window. Uh, we'll be answered as time follows, uh, as time allows, sorry. Uh, session will be recorded. Links will be made available. Uh, there will be a registration reminder for the next webinars, post-webinar surveys, a chat window uh, where you can post your questions. Um, and we have a couple of uh, featured articles up on our Audacity Knowledge Network that I'd like to mention here. So we have some top downloads um, for this past month here. We have uh, the OSNAP support article, Visual Basic Application Module article, uh, some service packs, free education software for students, free file viewers, a couple of our hot fixes, and um, there's going to be some quick links here. So for this week's agenda, as I mentioned, it's going to be talking about navigation tools. We're really going to be focusing in on the 2D navigation tools, so not the 3D, so that way uh, the LT users here will uh, get a bit more out of this uh, if other than, you know, if we had focused on the 3D tools only. Uh, so we'll be covering zoom, pan, uh, steering wheel, nav bar, um, and then Zach will join in and talk about uh, name views. And so before we get into the presentation in AutoCAD, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask you a couple of uh, poll questions here. So this first one is, um, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? <clears throat> it looks like uh, the vast majority of you are returnees, so thanks again for joining us. And um, a few of us uh, here are new, so welcome. Welcome to the webinars. I hope you'll join us uh, again next month. <clears throat> See, that looks to be about it. I'll go ahead and uh, close that poll. So we got 94% saying that uh, this is not your first time. All right, and I'll go ahead and share those results. <clears throat> and let's see, let's do one more here. Let's see, which AutoCAD-based application do you use? 
go ahead and launch that. So we have AutoCAD Core, AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, or some of the verticals, or you don't use AutoCAD at all, you use something else mostly. We'll wait here. It looks like most of you today are using LT, which is going to be nice uh, because we're really are focusing on this track, uh, Back to Basics, with uh, 2D drafting, which uh, definitely it falls within the realm of LT. Uh, looks like about a quarter of you are using Core AutoCAD and a total of about 30% uh, or so are using some other vertical. And a couple of other people in here are using uh, something else, maybe plant or something. So we'll go ahead and close out this poll here in just a couple more seconds, make sure everyone uh, gets a chance to answer. Okay, I'll go ahead and close out that poll and share with uh, you all the results here. So again, about 42% are um, AutoCAD uh, LT users here. So <clears throat> we're going to get into the presentation now. I'm going to open up this floor plan here. And so this is one of our sample files in uh, Core AutoCAD. Again, you can see that I'm in core AutoCAD. So just a reminder for LT users, um, please be aware <clears throat> in LT you you won't have the uh, view cube here. So this is a helpful navigation tool here for orientating uh, the view of um, your model in model space. But uh, again in 2D it's not going to be available. So let's get started with a few um, basics here. So most people may be aware that you can do some uh, simple navigation tasks through uh, the mouse, uh, specifically uh, on default the middle mouse button. So if, for example, I um, use the scroll feature on the middle mouse button, I will be able to zoom in, zoom out of the model. And also if I hold down uh, the middle mouse button, I can do pan. Now, interesting thing is you can turn off this feature with the middle mouse button by entering in M button pan. And so by default, it's at one, which allows you to use the middle uh, mouse button to pan. So if you hit zero and you turn it off, uh, it will revert to, uh, oh, snaps, I believe. So... Yep, there's your O-snaps. Exit out of that. Let's go back here and re-enable that because we'll be using this today. So um, for navigation tools, there's a couple of basics here. Uh, we have what's called the nav, uh, navigation bar here. On, uh, by default, uh, in Core AutoCAD, it's going to be underneath the view queue. And also, um, when you do have the view cube, it's going to be linked to the view cube. So if you try to move this while it's linked, it's going to move your view cube. So you're going to want to unlink that if it's linked. So if it's checkmarked like that, you uncheck it then you can move it independently and it's going to anchor up to um, the closest edge. So if you're closer to the top, it's going to go to the top. If you're closer to the left-hand side here, it will go to the left-hand side. And there's a couple of tools here, as you can see on the nav bar. Up top, we have the steering wheel. I'll get into this a little bit more. As some of your uh, basic navigation tools here. So you have 3D Orbit, uh, which is not available in LT. You have Zoom, which is available in LT. Rewind, which is available. And then Pan, which is available in LT. Um, but you won't have these other uh, tools here in the middle. Uh, this is more to do with the Orbit tool. So we'll exit out of that and get back to it in just a minute. Then we have, of course, the pen uh, tool here. And if you select that, you can use your left mouse button and use it to pan instead of using, holding down the middle mouse button. 
then you have different zoom uh, features here. And I'll go through that menu in just a second. You have the 3D orbit tool in uh, Core AutoCAD and, and most of the verticals here. Again, in LT you won't. Uh, it's kind of useful if you're doing some 3D modeling just to change the perspective of the model. It also lines up with orientations on the view cube here. So you can do, uh, let's say, let's exit out of that. And then you can change the orientation here. Okay, let's reset that. And then down here is um, show motion. And um, this is for creating playbacks. Um, I believe this is in paper space as well in AutoCAD LT. We'll get to that in a second. And again, you will have this drop down menu. In AutoCAD LT, you will only have uh, steering wheels um, for that and uh, zoom and pan. So you won't see orbit or show motion, I believe. I think you have this in paper space. We'll check that in a second. You won't have view cube. Um, and let's see here. Okay. Let's go back up and I'm going to show you a couple of other places where you can get these same tools. So up here on the ribbon, if you were in view, uh, the view tab, you could right click, show panels, go down to navigate, and then uh, you'll have the uh, commands here. So there are your, all the tools that are on the nav bar are right up here. And again, for those commands, you can do pan. You can do zoom. And it opens up the entire uh, zoom menu here, and I'll go over that. Uh, through the nav bar. And also, if you wanted to use an older um, function of pan, you can do hyphen pan, and then you're going to be uh, panning through uh, base point and displacement. So if I, for example, picked a point here, and I said I wanted to move to the left, it will pan the drawing over to the left-hand side. All right, so let's go and check out the uh, zoom options here. So on default, it's zoom to extents. So that's the extents of your drawing. You have some other features here. You can do a zoom window. And you can just create a window here. And it zooms in to um, the area uh, in the window that you created. We have zoom previous, so it zooms back to the previous view of the zoom. Uh, you can do zoom real time, zoom all, which goes back to extents. We got scale and dynamic, center object in and out. Let's go check out dynamic. This is kind of cool. So first you create this, uh, it looks like you're going to do like a viewport. Um, so it's a window. And then you can scale this window. And then you can move it to a section of the drawing. And you can rescale it, or you can hit Enter, and it'll zoom in into the contents of that window. Also, uh, we have scale, and we have object. Object's really neat uh, because you can just pick on an object and it's going to zoom into extents on that object. So if I pick this, it uh, looks like a phone. It zooms in on that phone. And of course you can use zoom in and out instead of rolling the middle mouse button. Another cool thing here is you can control the zoom factor. So if you enter in the zoom factor uh, command here, well, it's a system variable, excuse me. Uh, it is set at 100. 
I believe you can bring that all the way down to three as a minimum value. So when you zoom in using the middle mouse button, it's going to zoom in in much smaller increments. And if you go back and say, um, let's set back at 100, which is the max, it's going to zoom in in much larger increments. It's fairly straightforward. Um, quickly, we'll go and take a look at um, paper space. Paper space will kind of show you, give you an idea of what LT users will see. Um, they'll see the um, 2D steering wheel. So in Core AutoCAD, there's actually three varieties of steering wheel here. In LT, you have this one. You have your pan and your zoom tools. And again, if I do this drop down, that's what you'll see that you can uh, select or deselect steering wheels, pan, or zoom. So we can click on this steering wheel here, and we can have zoom, got to hold it down, and then you physically drag your mouse up or down to zoom. You can do pan, you got to hold down your mouse and physically drag it. Then you can do rewind, which will show you the previous uh, functions that you did for navigation, and you can cycle through those. Another thing is that in both the 2D version and the 3D version, you have a menu here. And in LT or in paper space, you'll only have uh, steering wheel settings or closing the wheel entirely. If you open up the settings, uh, core AutoCAD and LT users will see the same dialog box come up. From here, you can control the size of the, um, the steering wheel. And there's also a mini wheel. You can control the opacity. And you can display tool tips or tool messages for the navigation tools. Uh, you can enable single click incremental zoom, uh, incremental zoom um, and some other controls here like constrained uh, movement angle inverting vertical access, uh, keeping the scene upright. You can control your walk speed in Core AutoCAD, uh, and also um, rewind thumbnails. So you can uh, add uh, thumbnail previews for view changes uh, outside of the steering wheel. So let's just, for example, let's say we want to make the steering wheel huge, and we want to make it very opaque. Max out there. And suddenly now, it's about twice the size, and uh, it looks pretty opaque. It doesn't seem to be terribly translucent, translucent anymore. So let's just go back and revert this. Also, you, there are um, system variables within AutoCAD and some of the verticals where you can control this behavior as well. In LT, uh, you won't have a lot of these uh, system variables, and we'll go through those in just a second here. So let's just revert to how I had it before more or less. You can also just hit restore default. Let's go back into the mall space. Here we go. And again, let's bring up the steering wheel. So because I was in paper space, it had reverted to the 2D steering wheel, but I don't want to show you that again. I want to go to the full navigation wheel again. And uh, I can show you the other navigation wheels here in a second. So in Core AutoCAD, you have the full steering wheel here. And again, it functions the same way as the 2D one. So you hold down zoom, physically drag your mouse up and down for zoom, or hold down pan and physically drag the mouse around to pan around the drawing. And again, 3D orbit. There we go. And the rewind function. There we go. And let's go down on this drop down menu again. So we have a couple of other um, basic wheels here in the steering wheel. We have your view object wheel and your 
tour building wheel. Uh, we also have the mini wheel. So I'll show you the mini navigation wheel. This one is a little bit more limited visually. You have to circle around your mouse cursor to find the tool that you want. So each one has a different color. So this cyan color should be pan. There we go. And again, you can drag your mouse around just like on the large uh, steering wheel. And I'll give you the same function here. And then you can always change it back. There we go. All right, so let's go through some of the uh, commands and um, system variables, and then we'll wrap up here, and then I'll pass this over uh, on to Zach. So you can control um, some of the functions of the navigation bar and the steering wheel um, through the command line. Now, in the command line, it's called the navs wheel. So if you say you want to disable the nav bar, but you don't really want to drag uh, the mouse way up here into this little X here and close it out. Instead, you want to do it through the command line. You can type in nav bar. Right now it's off because I closed it out. And then hitting on again will turn it back on. There's also a, uh, another command here. It's actually a system variable does the exact same thing, but it's binary. So that one is called uh, navbar display. Right now it's at one for on, and if I hit zero, it goes away. Let's go revert that back. Same for uh, the um, steering wheel or navs wheel. Enter in the navs wheel command here. Brings up the steering wheel. And if I say navs wheel mode, right now it's on 2, which is the AutoCAD core full steering wheel. Um, I can cycle through uh, some of the other options. There's uh, three options I, I recall here. So if I hit one, it will take me to the tour building wheel. And if I go back in the command line, let's see here, I hit three. It should take me to the 2D uh, navigation wheel here, the steering wheel. And there it is. So 3 brings it back to 2D. So let's just revert back to 2, the full navigation wheel here. And again, as I mentioned, uh, you can control the opacity and uh, the size uh, through system variables, which aren't included in LT, but you'll have it if you have core. So that would be navs wheel opacity, big or mini, depending on what kind of steering wheel you're using, but we're using big, so let's just keep it there. And right now it's at 61, as you saw in the slider on the options, that's what I had set it to. Uh, perhaps I want back down to 50 by default. And then on the size, it is navs wheel size big. And there's only two options here. Um, so in the settings, you can see you can really scroll between the sizes here, but on here, it's either the normal size or it's maxed out. So right now it's at normal size. If I hit two, it's going to be maxed out. And here it is. And 
And uh, lastly, that okay, yeah, that seems to about do it. There, I covered all the uh, variables and commands there. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring over Zach, and he's going to show you a different drawing and show you the named views. So Zach, uh, if you'd like to uh, unmute yourself and come on over. Sure thing. So just take a moment, everybody stand up, stretch your legs, look to the person in the cube next to you or in an office nearby and put on your creepiest smile and wave at them and then look away and don't look at them again. Isn't that fun? All right. So here we are. In AutoCAD, I'm going to switch to the exterior elevations drawing, which also comes with both full and LT. And as you can see there, it is exactly what it's called. It's a bunch of exterior elevations, not surprisingly there. So we're going to go into what named views are, what they are, how to use them, why they're cool, etc. So the default empty uh, file templates won't have any named views in them. They'll have some preset views, but they won't have any custom views to switch to and from. So uh, this sample file here, the exterior elevations one does. Now, when you, you know, a lot of time is spent in AutoCAD zooming and panning around and using all the tools that Scott just showed you how to use. Um, and just getting the right thing on the screen or the right thing set for plotting if you're in a layout and you're on a viewport and you're trying to get just the right part of your model to show. So a lot of times if you go back and forth between layout tabs and the model tab, you'll spend some time zooming and panning and trying to get back to the same view you previously had. And with named views, you can save the exact way, take a snapshot of how your drawing looks at that moment and quickly revert back to those. So the things that are saved when you make a named view are things like the magnification, the zoom level, the center point, the view direction, um, the location of the view, whether you're on the model tab or if you're on a specific layout. Uh, one thing that's really cool is it saves your layer visibility at that moment. So if you have certain layers turned on or off, and you make a view, it saves the state of those layers with your view. So it's sort of like what you can do with a layer state, but it's even cooler because it includes all this other stuff. Um, it'll save your user coordinate system if you have changed the UCS for a particular view. Uh, you can put in categories for your views, but you don't have to. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, some things that are only in the full AutoCAD, it also saves your 3D perspective, your live section if you have any. If you're set to a particular visual style, that information gets saved with the view as well. And you can also put in background. You can put a background image in if you wanted to for a specific views, which is pretty nifty. But since it only is available in full AutoCAD, we're going to skip those last features today. So uh, there are a few different ways you can get to the named views. So we'll cover those. Um, now, some of them are available through the old pull-down menus, which aren't turned on by default. I'll show you how to do that, though. If you hit your up here, your quick access toolbar, if you turn on the menu bar right here, that will turn on your file edit view insert. All these pull-down menus from days gone by where the tools still are. They're still in the program. They still work. Uh, but most of these commands and all these functions have been moved to the ribbons, so want the pull down menus on by default they're off but on the view menu you can go down to named views and that launches the view manager which is what we see here uh, and in the model views you see there's front elevation left elevation rear and right elevation which is exactly what they say they are these are the preset ones that uh, when they created the sample drawing they made those named custom views. So if you were to look in a blank template file, you'll see some preset views, which are these guys down here, but they're not custom views. So this model view section up here would be empty if you just started with a blank brand new template. So other places you can access your views are in full AutoCAD. You've got something here. It's the view controls. And you can access your custom model views here, which are the same ones we just saw in the view manager. Also through this pull down, you can open up your view manager. Same as it was just a moment ago. 
couple of other ways you can get to it. You can type the command view and it brings up the view manager. And just in case you didn't have enough ways to do that, there's a panel which, like the Navigate panel, is turned off by default in both LT and Full AutoCAD. But if you right-click, you can go over to Show Panels, and there is a Views panel. And this, again, is on the View Ribbon tab up here. So the Views, as you see here, has all of your custom views, just like the View Manager, and another way to launch the View Manager. So pick your favorite way and stick with it. Now one thing I wanted to show is that you know, a lot of times people want their model area to be as clean as possible. They don't want the viewport controls over here up in the upper left corner. Uh, and if you also, if you go to a layout tab and you have a viewport, and we'll just make one real quick here, and you activate the viewport, you'll have the viewport controls available here as well, just like you do on the model tab. So again, some people like that turned off, so I'll show you that. Turn it off, again, in full AutoCAD only. This is a feature. Uh, down here on the 3D modeling tab of options is the display the viewport controls. If you uncheck that, they turn off. Okay, we'll go back into options. We'll check it. We'll turn them back on. What that checkbox really controls is a system variable called VP controls. And so if we just type in VP control, enter that, it's either on or it's off. Hey, there they go again, they're off. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I want them on, so I'm going to leave them on. So let's go back to the model tab. There we are. So we've seen all the ways we can bring up the view manager. Let's take a look and see what views, what switching between the views will do for us. So if we go to the front elevation, it brings up the front elevation. Uh, same if we go to any of the others. And it's just a real good way to save views that you worked hard on to zoom in, to pan around, to maybe use zoom window to get it just right on the screen. And you want to save that. Or uh, if you are working in viewports, um, you know, maybe you just want to have a particular view in your viewport and you want to plot it that way. It's an easy way to get to it. Now, one thing you can do if you are in LT, uh, let's go back to our elevations drawing instead. If you're in LT, you won't have these viewport controls. But you can do something that sort of mimics that. And what we're going to use is we're going to use an old toolbar. So we're going to use the command dash toolbar hyphen toolbar. It's going to ask us what toolbar we want to turn on. You could do this through the CUI, but it's just quicker and easier to do it this way. Type in view. Tell it you want to show the toolbar. And it's on my other screen, so I'll reach over here and grab it and pull it into AutoCAD. <laughs> there we are. So there's the view toolbar. Now the view toolbar has the same stuff that the viewport controls has. It has the pull down that shows you your custom named views that have been saved in the drawing. Now in case you want to turn this stuff off, you can always go into the CUI editor and turn off all these presets. Um, what I would do, uh, I'll just show you what I would do real quick here, just take a second. So if we edit this, what I'm, I'm not even going to edit the view toolbar. I'm just going to make a copy of it so I don't mess up the original, and I'll make my own. So I'm going to copy this. <laughs> and again, this is just a way that you can get yourself the same functionality in LT that the full AutoCAD users have. So maybe I want this one for that one. And maybe I'll make a new layout tab. And on that one, I might want this one. 
There we are. And the last thing I wanted to cover here, as since we're talking about viewports and getting things right with your views and getting exactly how you want it, let's go back to layout one where I've got my front elevation set as my current view. Now I'm going to modify from, I'm going to deviate a little bit from this view just so I can get the scale correct on my viewport here. So the default paper size, 8.5 by 11. I'm going to go ahead and change my scale in my viewport to, I think it's 16th and it equals a foot. It gives me a pretty good, pretty good representation there. Now, if I zoom or if I pan, it's going to change the, view, the scale of my viewport. And maybe I don't want to do that because I want to make sure when I plot this thing out, it plots out to scale. Somebody can lay a ruler on it and it comes out the way you expect it to. So what you can do is you can display lock your viewports. So now, if I activate the viewport, I'm in model space, as you can see down here. If I zoom in and out, it zooms in and out the whole thing, and it'll tell you down at the command line that it's not happy with you trying to zoom into a locked viewport, and it, it toggles in and out of paper space. And it tells you that down at the command line. But what if you're on a layout tab, and you want to zoom in and out a little bit, you want to see more of the drawing? You can certainly do that, and there are a couple ways you can do that. What we're going to do is we're going to maximize the viewport. So you can double click on your viewport itself. And you can see now we're still on layout one, but we're in a maximized viewport. So we can zoom, we can pan around, we can look at other details, we can do anything else we want to do. But when we double click again on the viewport, we're back to the same view that we had in the in the viewport because we locked the display of the viewport. So maximize the viewport, you can do it a couple different ways. Like I said, you can double click the viewport itself. You can click this button down here on your status bar for maximize viewport. That gets you in and out. It turns into a minimize button, not surprisingly, once you're in. Or at the command line, if you're a fan of the command line, you can always do VP max, like so. And VP min will then get you out of it. So with the name views and, and the view manager, you can really control and save yourself some time, especially when your drawings are really busy and you, you may be working in the model tab and you've got just drawings everywhere, uh, drawing content everywhere. And, and to save yourself time from, from zooming out and panning back in and maybe having to use zoom window, which Scott showed you, you know, maybe to save yourself some time, get the view exactly the way you want it, bring up the view manager, and just make yourself a new view. Save your time in the long run, and it'll help you ensure that your, your viewports on your layouts are the same way you want them to look every time. So that's pretty much it as far as named views go. Hope you, hope you take them and in integrate them into your workflows. If you didn't know about them before, if you might not have explored them previously, Hopefully this will help you. This video course is going to be posted up with all the rest of our webinars at this point. So I will throw you back over to Scott here. He's got a little bit left, and then we'll get into some Q&A. So I think we're getting Scott back here. Looks like we're getting back in business. All right. So uh, sorry about that. I hope everyone can hear me now. Uh, please let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay, great. Okay. So you're back. Okay, great. And let's, so let's go back to the PowerPoint and, uh, again, um, probably missed out on some stuff here. So let's just take it all back. So we had a couple of articles to go over here uh, I wanted to mention again. We had uh, panning and zooming, steering wheels, create views in your AutoCAD drawing, and saving and restoring views. So these are articles that uh, cover topics that we discussed during this presentation. Uh, also, there's a link here for our Autodesk Knowledge Network community. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Hitchhiker's Guide to AutoCAD Basics and to uh, George Murrow's Mastering AutoCAD 2016 and AutoCAD LT 2016. Both of those are great guides. And also, if anyone is interested in some training, Ascent offers AutoCAD training classes here. So, thanks again for joining us here. And again, Feel free to leave any other questions you have in the remaining uh, 10 minutes or so here, and we'll go ahead and try to answer them as time allows. Uh, again, we have a tiny URL uh, where you can leave some ideas and suggestions.
Um, you can leave it in the Autodesk community forum. You can email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com, subject line, build your Autocad IQ. So again, uh, let's just go back to Q&A, and then that would conclude our presentation. Uh, sorry again for the technical issues that we've experienced today. Uh, yeah, it looks like we've had a bit of a vault for a moment, maybe, on huh, Zach? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the questions that I uh, wanted to cover in here is somebody had asked, looked like Teresa had asked, about blocks in AutoCAD LT. And there are indeed some sample drawings that ship with the program. They'll be in your samples directory within program files. But um, I just wanted to, if anybody's not watching the, ch the, the question and answer feed, um, and if you're just listening only, there is also Autodesk Seek which you can you can pull up uh, through the program or if you just want to hit it in the web browser you just which is what will happen anyway but you can just type in at the at your address and your URL in your browser seek.autodesk.com will take you to a pretty good host of of uh, downloadable reusable blocks from different manufacturers and different file formats we've got PDFs and Revit files and Inventor files and AutoCAD files of course Uh, how do you access the 3D workspace? Now, uh, if you're in AutoCAD LT, there won't be a 3D workspace. But if you're in full AutoCAD, there are a couple ways you can do it. And I think we're seeing Scott's uh, AutoCAD on the screen now. So if you go over to, there are a couple places you can do it. Down along the status bar across the bottom, there's a gear icon with a pull-down menu. If you click that, it'll show you any available uh, workspaces that you have. Uh, and again, workspaces are just a, a combination of, of the various UI elements that you might want grouped together for a particular task or a particular project you're working on. You can also, by default, access the pull-down menu from the top in the Quick Access Toolbar that shows you also the same information, uh, any available workspaces that you have to toggle to and from. That Can I also add something to it, uh, just very quickly? Um, as Renee asked a question about uh, how to uh, get to the Views um, tab uh, under the View uh, itself. And uh, there's a bug in AutoCAD uh, 2014 to 2016 where they forgot to add this Views um, under widgets. If you go to uh, yeah, 3D under 3D modeling or 3D basic. If you go to the visualize tab, modeling you have a lot more options to work with here. So you have that under visualize uh, tab itself. The view the views panel is available there. But poly solids, poly mesh items here. Uh, you have a full range of uh, solids and mesh tools to work with. So I think somebody would have wanted to look at and see on the visualize tab, Scott, there is the, uh, the views panel is there. And that's the same views panel that we looked at a little while ago uh, that you can turn on or off on when you're on the view ribbon tab. Uh, but again, in both LT and full AutoCAD, the views panel uh, on the view tab anyway is, is turned off, but you can always toggle it on just by going to the view tab right-clicking in the up in the ribbon area, show panels, and turning that panel back on. All right, we have a couple other questions here. Let's see. And Renee, yeah, the the, uh, the visualize tab is not going to be something in the AutoCAD LT uh, if you have LT. Um, but if you've got full AutoCAD, the, the visualize tab should be there in the, at least in the 3D uh, workspace. Yeah, for the visualize tab here, uh, if you can't see it, you're going to want to go up here to uh, the ribbon. So there's this uh, tabs menu here. You're going to right click, go to show tabs, and check to see if this is check mark. So if visualize is unchecked, go ahead and check it and you should be able to see that tab again. All right, we got more questions coming in here. 
And again, our sincerest apologies for that uh, technical issue that we experienced uh, a couple minutes back. Uh, seems to have messed with our uh, sound as well. So uh, let's see, is there a command shortcut to turn on and off navigation cube? Yep. And um, all of you and through options, yes, there is. One second. Down here. So that would be the nav cube command. There we go. And so it's just on or off, or you can select settings. Let's go ahead and say off. And then there it goes, it disappears. Go back, get on. There it is again. And you can also get into settings. Here you go. Uh, so if you want to uh, change the opacity or change the size, now by default it's going to be set to automatic, but let's say you want a much bigger cube. Uncheck automatic. Make this huge. Let's turn up the opacity too. Let's go ahead and hit OK, and there you go. We have another question in here. Uh, will uh, Autodesk add the Visualize panel to AutoCAD LT? Uh, LT can open and view 3D models. Uh, you're right, and uh, you can. Uh, and, and for that reason, it, when you bring up the View Manager that we looked at earlier, the view manager has some preset views, and even in LT, this is the case. So you can go to the preset views, and you can switch to top, left, bottom, isometric. And isometric are really the ones you want for viewing 3D models, but uh, you don't have the orbit command that you like you have. You can't just freely orbit around in LT. You're really limited to the to the views that um, either the, the isometric views. Now, here's another the thing I would bring up, if somebody had made a 3D model using full AutoCAD and they made different views where they show different angles than the four isometric views shown there, if they made other 3D views, that would be something that within LT you could toggle back and forth uh, between the, any custom views that they happen to have created in the drawings. So that's another use of that. And again, these preset views really do correlate with the, uh, the views that you could uh, use in the view queue. So if I selected this preset views for top, it reverts to top. See in the view queue. Now if uh, I go back here and I say I want an isometric view, Go. Now we have a nice metric view. There's a question about turning off the message about zooming into a locked viewport. And to the best of my knowledge, I don't think there's a way to do that. That's certainly something that's been requested. And it does, with every roll of the wheel, it does put another message on there. So that can really fill up your uh, can really fill up your command history, and we understand that that can be annoying. But at this point, anyway, uh, we don't have a way to turn that off. I'm sorry about that one. Okay, so if anyone else has any other questions, uh, go ahead and post them now. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and uh, end this presentation here. And again, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, Zach and I really do appreciate you coming. Uh, for all the first timers, uh, welcome. I hope you'll join us again next month. And uh, again, our apologies for that uh, technical issue that we had earlier that affected the the video and the sound. And just a reminder, next month, by next month, Scott means next uh, 31st of this month. It's a long month, and we had a short one last time, so we're making up for it. So we'll see you all for the basics track uh, here again on the uh, at the very end of March. But uh, as with all these IQ uh, webinars, Thursday is the day, and there will be one every Thursday. But the back to basics as with all the other tracks, only once a month each. But hopefully you can join us for as many as you possibly can. Uh, all we're trying to do is help out and get as much information to you so you can take it and use it and do what you will with it. And again, this session was recorded, so hopefully by the end of today we'll be able to get this video up and uh, then you can go ahead and access it uh, when you would like.
So that concludes the presentation for today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this broadcast. Thanks, uh, thanks again, everyone, for coming, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.